So I'm going to talk today about the navigation router. Now, the navigation router started out as a router for React only. But I started noticing that a lot of other React routers were starting to say that they also support um, React Native. So that got me interested. I thought, can I get the navigation router to work on React Native? So that was, uh, that was about two years ago. And it's taken me two years to add support for React Native. And so those two years have taught me a lot. And the main thing that I learned is never trust a React router when it says it also supports React Native. <laughs> right, except mine. OK, you can, you can trust mine. <laughs> Right, so uh, the Navigation Router is a new navigation library for React Native that gives you 100% native navigation on Android and iOS. So what do I mean by 100% native navigation? I mean that it uses the same native navigation APIs that you'd use, that we'd use if we were building a native app without React Native. So let's have a look at what these native navigation, nav navigation APIs look like, starting uh, with Android. So if we're building uh, an Android app without React Native, then we use uh, classes called fragments. Now, because this is an Android app, these classes are Java classes. So we, each scene in our app would be represented by a fragment. So if we're building a Twitter app, for example, then we have uh, one fragment for the home view and another fragment for the tweet view. And when the user selects a tweet on their home screen, then we replace the current home screen with the new tweet screen by calling the replace method on the fragment manager. Now, anybody that's familiar with fragments will know that this line of code isn't 100% correct, but it's more pseudocode just to keep the code sample short and understandable. So once we, uh, call the replace, once we replace the home screen with the tweet screen by calling the replace method on the fragment manager, then Android takes care of the rest. It animates a new tweet screen in over the top of the home screen. And you can see here, I'm assuming that the default Android animation is to slide the tweet screen up from the bottom of the screen. So let's have a look at what the native uh, iOS navigation API looks like. So if we're building a Twitter iOS app without React Native, then we use uh, classes called view and navigation controllers. And um, this time, because we're doing an iOS app, these are Objective-C classes, not Java classes. And so when, um, and also the, uh, each screen in our app is represented by one view controller. So in our Twitter app, we have one view controller for the home view and another view controller for the tweet view. So when the user taps a tweet on their home screen, then we push the new tweet screen onto the top of the navigation controller stack. And so once we push a new tweet screen onto the top of the navigation controller stack, then iOS takes care of animating the new tweet screen in over the top of the home screen, and it runs the default iOS animation, which is to slide the tweet screen in from the right of the screen, like you see here. So I'm going to show how the navigation router uses these native navigation APIs on Android and iOS to give us 100% native navigation on both platforms. So we're going to build a React Native Twitter app using the navigation router. So, um, so let's assume that we've already created our React Native app by running React Native init Twitter. And now we're going to install the navigation router. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install the free navigation-related packages from NPM, and then we auto-link them. And that's it. Like, we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to uh, modify any native files. We don't have to um, install any third-party libraries. The navigation router is ready to go. We can start using it. So in order to set up our app to use a navigation router, we first of all create what's called a state navigator. And this is where we define our states. So we have one state for each scene in our app. So we have a home state for the home scene and a tweet state for the tweet scene. And don't worry about the track crumb trail property for now. We're going to come back to that a bit later on in the talk. So the next step after we create our state navigator is to map each of our states to the component that renders the associated scene. So let's assume we've already created home and tweet components for, for our scenes, and then we map uh, then we assign a render scene function to each of our states that returns the associated component. So um, we assign a render scene function to the home state that returns the home component, and a render scene function to the tweet state that returns the tweet component. And so then the next stage is to do an initial navigation to the home state by calling the navigate function on the state navigator. Um, and this is just so that when our app first starts, it's the, the home scene that's displayed first. And then the next stage, the final stage, is to render our app. Um, so don't worry too much about the navigation handler component. That just puts our state navigator into React context. 
so that we can access it from within any of our scenes. The important component here is the navigation stack component. And it's a navigation stack component that renders the, the stack of scenes as the user navigates around the app. And I'm going to show it's a navigation stack component um, that calls into those native navigation APIs to give us the 100% native navigation on both platforms. So now, if we run our app, this is what we see. We see the home scene uh, displayed first. Uh, and uh, OK, there's nothing too exciting yet, but the interesting stuff happens once the user selects a tweet on their home screen. So we navigate from the home scene to the tweet scene by calling the navigate function on our state navigator, just like we did when we were starting the app to navigate to the home scene. But this time, because we're inside a button press of the home component, we have to get our state navigator out of the React context. And at the same time as we, put, we navigate and we pass the, uh, the tweet state, we also pass across uh, the ID of the selected tweet. And now the navigation stack component listens for navigation events. So it sees that the new state is the tweet state, and it calls the render scene function that we assign to that tweet state. And then we return the tweet component, and the navigation stack component pushes the tweet component onto its array of scenes. So now it renders both the home scene and the tweet scene together. Now, if the navigation stack component was just a regular JavaScript component, then when we run our app on Android or iOS, this is what we'd see. We'd see both scenes rendered at the same time. We'd see the home scene rendered at the top and the tweet scene rendered uh, at the bottom. But that's not what we're expecting, right? We're expecting um, the tweet scene to animate in over the top of the home scene. Right? But don't worry, the, the, the navigation stack component is not a regular JavaScript component. It's a native component. Um, and because it's a native component, it can override the default behavior. So uh, because it's a native component, there are corresponding navigation stack view classes on both the Android and the iOS side. So you can see here at the top, that's the navigation stack view Java class on Android. And at the bottom is a navigation stack view Objective-C class on iOS. And React Native creates corresponding, uh, uh, creates a, turns the home scene and the tweet scene components into child views of these navigation stack view classes. So let's have a look at the implementation of the, these navigation stack views, starting um, first with Android. So when the user selects a, a tweet from their home screen, then React Native creates a corresponding tweet view Java class, and it passes into the navigation stack view by calling its add view method. And the navigation stack view overrides this method to change the default behavior. And this is where it calls into the native navigation API that we've already seen, right? So this is where it, it replaces the home screen with the new tweet screen by calling the replace method on the fragment manager. And now, if we run our app on Android, instead of seeing both scenes rendered at the same time like we saw before, you know, one above the other, now Android animates a new tweet screen into place over the top of the home screen, and it runs a default Android animation, which is to slide the tweet screen up from the bottom of the screen. And that's because we're calling the native replace method on the fragment manager. So let's have a look at the corresponding uh, process, but on iOS this time. So when the user taps the tweet on their home screen, then React Native creates a corresponding tweet view Objective-C class this time, and it passes it into the navigation stack view via its insert React subview method this time. And again, the navigation stack view overrides this method and so that it can change the default behavior. And again, this is where it calls into the native navigation API, but this time the native iOS navigation API. So it pushes the new tweet view onto the top of the navigation controller stack. And once it pushes, so if we run our app on iOS now, again, we won't see both scenes rendered at the same time, you know, one above the other now, iOS will animate the new tweet screen into place over the top of the home scene. And because we're calling the native iOS navigation API, it will run the default iOS animation, which is to slide the tweet screen in over the top. So once the user's finished reading their tweet, then they tap the back button to return to their home screen. Right? And we can, uh, we, we can navigate back to the home screen by calling the navigate back function on the state navigator, our state navigator. And again, just like before when we were navigating, we get the state navigator from the React context. And at the same time, we pass a parameter of one to indicate that we want to go back one screen, back to the home screen. And now the navigation stack component on the React side listens for back navigation events. It sees, um, it, it sees that we've popped, that we've navigated back. So it removes its tweet view, its tweet component from its stack of scenes. And now it only renders the home component. 
So let's have a look at how that uh, removing the tweet component from its stacker scenes is communicated to the native side, starting with Android. So React Native tells the navigation stack view Java class to remove its child tweet view by calling its remove view at method. And just like before, the navigation stack view uh, overrides this method to change the default behavior. And this is where it calls into the native navigation API for navigating back on Android. And that, this time, that is the pop back stack method on the fragment manager. And so once it calls the native uh, Android navigation API for, for navigating back, then Android animates the tweet screen back out the way it came in, sliding it back off uh, the bottom of the screen, back out the way it came in, and shows the home screen in its place. And let's have a look at the corresponding uh, process, but on iOS this time. So when the user taps the back button to return to their home screen, then React Native tells the navigation stack view Objective C class to remove its child tweet view by calling its remove React subview method this time. And again, the navigation stack view overrides this method. And this is where, so it can change the default uh, rendering behavior. And this is where it calls into the native iOS navigation API for navigating back. So it pops the tweet view from the top of the navigation controller stack. And then once it does that, iOS takes care of the rest. It animates the tweet screen back out the way it came in, slides it off the screen, running the default iOS animation to slide it off and show the home screen in its place. So to recap, on the React side, the navigation stack component renders the stack of scenes and it pushes and pops from this stack of scenes as the user navigates around the app. And then React Native communicates these additions and removals to the stack onto the native side. And then on the native side, the navigation stack view classes apply the changes to the stack by calling into the native platform specific navigation APIs. And that's how the navigation route achieves 100% uh, native navigation on both platforms. OK. So. Um, Remember that track crumb trail property that I said not to worry about from the beginning of the talk? Well, now it's time to look at the crumb trail in uh, some detail. OK, so in the fairy story, Hansel and Gretel uh, remember their route through the woods by dropping a trail of breadcrumbs as they go. And the navigation router does something similar to remember the route that a user takes through the app. So every time a user visits a scene, then the navigation router drops a crumb to remember where they've been. So let's take an example in the Twitter app, right? When, when the user taps a tweet A on, on their home screen, then the navigation router drops a crumb to remember the home screen. And then if the user selects tweet B, then the navigation router drops a crumb to remember tweet A. And so this is what the crumb trail looks like. It's an array of crumbs. And each crumb holds two pieces of information to identify the scene. So it holds the state and the associated data. So you can see in our Twitter example, we start off with the home crumb. And then the next one is the crumb to remember tweet A. And you can see that the current scene, which is tweet B, um, doesn't appear in the crumb trail. That doesn't appear until the user selects tweet C. And that's when the navigation router drops a crumb to remember tweet B. So you see that the, the, the crumb trail, the list of uh, the crumbs array, is uh, a list of all the visited scenes of a user, not including the current scene. And it's the track crumb trail property from the beginning of the talk that turns on this crumb trail tracking behavior. So we can access this crumbs array at any time from within any of, us, from within any of our scenes uh, by getting it from the React context. Uh, we get the state navigator from React context, just like we did when we were navigating. And then the crumbs array is just a property hanging off the state context property of that. So let's have a look at how this crumbs array helps us make decisions about how we navigate. So let's take this scenario. Um, the user selects to read tweet A from their home screen. Then they select tweet B, which is one of the replies to tweet A. And then when they finish reading tweet B, they decide to look at a different reply to the original tweet A. So, but instead of tapping the back button to go back to tweet A, what they do is they scroll up tweet B and they reselect the original tweet A. So what you get is you get a stack that looks like this. You get tweet A followed by tweet B and then followed by tweet A again. 
So uh, that, that's it. So that's the default behavior of the navigation router. Sorry, every time we navigate, the navigation router pushes a new scene onto the stack, at least when the track control property is enabled anyway. But obviously this can get quite annoying for the user, right? Now they have to tap back three times to return back to their home screen. What if instead we um, detect that the user is reselecting their previous tweet when they're actually on tweet B, and instead of navigating them forward to tweet A again, we actually navigate them back one instead, back to tweet A. And then we end up with a much shortened stack. We end up with a stack which is just the home scene followed by tweet A. And now the user only has to tap back once to return to their home scene. So we can do this uh, using the crumbs array. Right, because uh, when, when the user's on tweet B and they scroll up and they reselect their original tweet A, we can check what the last crumb is. Because remember, the last crumb is actually the previous scene. So what we do is we check when the user's on tweet B, they scroll up and they reselect tweet A. We check if the last crumb, that's the previous scene, is actually already tweet A. And we do that by checking its state and data properties. So if the last crumb is already tweet A, then we navigate them back. And if it isn't, so if they got to tweet B from a different tweet, like tweet C, for example, then we navigate them forward to tweet A like normal. So you see the crumb, the crumb trail comes in handy. It tells us where we've been, and it helps us make decisions about where we want to go next. But obviously putting uh, navigation rules like this into our tweet component can get uh, a bit messy. Right? What if instead we said, let's keep the tweet component dumb so that it always navigates to tweet A. It doesn't have to check what the crumbs are or what the previous tweet is. Instead, it just always navigates to tweet A. And then what we do is we move our navigation rules out of the tweet component and put them out somewhere else. So we can move our navigation rules out of the tweet component. We can put them in a truncate crumb trail function that we attach to the tweet state. And so what happens when we navigate, the navigation router calls our truncate crumb trail function and it passes in the uh, proposed crumbs array. And then we return the actual crumbs array that we want. So in our example, when the user's on tweet B and they scroll up and they reselect tweet A, then the nav navigation router passes in the proposed crumbs array. So that's the home screen, tweet A, and then uh, tweet B. And then we chop the last two crumbs off the end and we just return the home crumb. So then the stack just becomes the home crumb followed by tweet A. So you can see that even though we navigated forward in, tweet, in, the, in, the, in the tweet component, we always navigated forward to tweet A, we actually take the user back to tweet A rather than pushing it again. So let's have a look at what this trunk, truncate crumb trail information implementation looks like. So what we do is we first of all get the, uh, the last but one crumb and we check if its tweet ID is the same as the next tweet ID. And we get the next tweet ID from the data parameter passed in. So what we're checking, we're checking if the previous scene is the same as the next scene. So if the previous scene and the next scene are the same, then we chop the last two crumbs off. So we actually navigate them back to the original tweet A. And if the previous scene isn't the same as the next scene, so it came from tweet C to tweet B, then we just navigate them forward. We don't change the crumbs array and we navigate them forward to tweet A. Okay, so putting this all together, um, you can see that we can do whatever navigation we want on the React side because we have full control over the crumbs array. And what, um, what goes in the crumbs array uh, determines the stack of scenes that the navigation router renders. And then the changes to the stack of scenes is communicated to the native side by React Native. And then on the native side, the navigation stack views applies these changes by calling into the native platform-specific navigation APIs on both platforms. And that's a, a thanks for listening anyway. Sorry about that complication at the beginning. And <laughs> that's, that's a link to the documentation. Um, thanks. <laughs>